Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the new milestone for the humanity as a whole. It looks like we've officially discovered 5,000 confirmed exoplanets. 5,005 as a matter of fact. With each of the confirmed exoplanets now entered in the NASA's exoplanet archive that you can explore by yourself using the link in the description. And this, of course, is a huge achievement for the entire astronomical community. Especially because pretty much every single one of these planets so far has been extremely unique and very different from anything we have in the solar system. And so in this video we're going to discuss a brief history of the search for exoplanets, but also discuss what all of this means to us as a whole. Specifically, what's our next step? Where are we actually headed after this? And so let's start with a bit of a history and an introduction to the planetary search. And you actually might already know a little bit about the first exoplanets ever found. The most iconic exoplanets were actually discovered in 1992. These were the planets that you see orbiting right here around a system known as PSR B1257 plus 12. Although this system has an actual name, it's known as the Lich, and that's because it's a very unusual star system. This is actually a pulsar system, with the planets here being pulsar planets. And the two first planets, approximately 4.3 and 3.9 masses of Earth in mass, discovered back in 1992 by Dale Frail and Alexander Walshgun, with the much, much smaller third planet discovered in 1994. And all of this was found using what's known as the pulsar timing system, and this is something we've discussed in one of the previous videos that you might want to check out by yourself by clicking the link right there or in the description below. But despite the system being iconic for being the first confirmed, this is actually not the first exoplanet originally assumed to exist out there. This title belongs to the planet you see right here with the official name Tadmor, also known as Gamma Cephei AB. And this was a hypothesized planet originally discovered in 1988 through the method known as the radial velocity method that essentially looks at different wobbles of the planet and the star and looks at the red shift and the blue shift of the light coming from the star, which normally indicates that something is orbiting around it. And almost a thousand different planets have been discovered using this very unique method. And in 1988, two teams looking at this particular star system discovered something similar around it. But because of the lack of very detailed observational data and also because the telescopes back then were not really that powerful, it essentially took a very long time to confirm this and it wasn't really until 2002 that this particular planet was confirmed. With the other intriguing planet discovered using a very similar method, known as 51 Pegasi b, discovered in 1995. This is actually also a very well-known star system, with this high Jupiter having two different names, the Laraphon and the official name the Medium. But that's of course the radial velocity method that mostly relies on a relatively large oscillation of the star. So basically something relatively massive has to sort of pull on the star in order for us to be able to find the planet here. But planets like Earth, for example, are just not massive enough and are far enough from the star to not wobble the star as much. As a matter of fact, it would be very difficult to discover Earth using this method. And so back in the days, the NASA's William Baruki that you see right here pioneered an extremely original method known as the transit method. The method that relies on the observations from the star and the tiny dips that could indicate a planet passing in front of such star. And that's literally when the field exploded. Suddenly, so many new planets started to be discovered by a lot of new missions, with the most prolific mission to date being the iconic Kepler Space Telescope that discovered thousands and thousands of exoplanets. With some of these discoveries becoming iconic over time, including of course some planets that we've never thought would exist out there. But interestingly, the first planet discovered using the transit method was actually found a decade before the Kepler mission became operational. It was a planet currently known as the Osiris, more scientifically known as HD 209458b, and it's a planet that was discovered back in 1999, with the planet once again being what's known as the hot Jupiter, although in this case located around a star very similar to our Sun. And a lot of these early discoveries, even from the Kepler telescope, sort of raised a very interesting question. Many different hot Jupiters were discovered over many years, yet none of these planets existed in our own solar system. And with more and more planets discovered every year after 2009 when Kepler Space Telescope was launched, the mystery sort of intensified. 
So first of all, these hot Jupiters were really, really enormous. Their existence and their origin was not really easily explained. And the temperature on the surface of some of these planets was even higher than the temperature on the surface of some of the stars. But then, as the scientists kept looking around, they started to discover other types of planets that also didn't make sense. For example, they started to discover so-called mini-Neptunes, the planets that in terms of size and mass were somewhere between Earth and Neptune. They were larger and more massive than Earth, but were definitively smaller and less massive than Neptune, with some studies even suggesting that some of these planets had the potential to be habitable because of their location around the star system. And as Kepler telescope kept operating and finding more planets, a lot of super-Earth were discovered as well, planets that could potentially be rocky like Earth, but several masses of Earth in mass, with many of these planets discovered in the last few years as well. And if we were to actually look at these 5005 exoplanets discovered so far, with many of these planets obviously found by the Kepler telescope, we would actually see a very unusual pattern. Except for those first three pulsar planets, pretty much everything else on the list could sort of be classified as one of the following. Approximately 30% were gas giants, 31% were super-Earths, 35% were Neptune-like or mini-Neptunes, and only 4% were similar to some extent to what we would call a terrestrial planet like Earth. Which of course by itself presents a bit of a mystery. And a mystery that we are currently unable to answer definitively. So obviously, on the one hand, it could be just the bias. Maybe we're just seeing the planets that are easiest to see. And in this case, mini Neptunes, hot Jupiters, and a lot of really massive, really large planets would obviously be much easier to find. And this would be especially true of the radial velocity method, where the mass and the obvious gravity pull on the star would be most prevalent if the planet was more massive. And interestingly, even with the transit method, the actual statistics seem to be relatively similar. So even though the modern telescopes are pretty good at picking up relatively small planets transiting in front of different types of stars and producing different types of observations, despite all of this, the actual statistics still seem to be relatively similar. And so explaining why there are no mini Neptunes, super Earths, or hot Jupiters located in the solar system, and why so many of them seem to be present around other star systems, is not a question anyone can answer right now. But that's of course where that next mission, the TESS telescope, comes into play as well. It's still currently in operation and is still actively looking around and trying to find even more planets, using some of the most up-to-date and some of the most advanced observational techniques known to us, but it will probably still be a few years before some of the planets discovered here so far can be confirmed. As a matter of fact, as you can see in this link right here, nearly 5,500 test project candidates have been discovered so far, but only 203 of them have been confirmed. So it's probably going to be a while before we can confirm most of them and before we can actually see if the statistics do change or if they actually still remain the same. But I guess more importantly, when it comes to studying individual planets and trying to actually see what's happening on one of these planets, even if they're much closer to us, we're still not really there just yet. Now, it's possible that some of the follow-up studies by James Webb Space Telescope or by the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope that's going to be operational sometimes later could maybe help us identify certain types of atmosphere present on some of these planets. When it comes to studying the details of some of these planets, we're still basically just dealing with a single pixel on a very complex camera, which basically means that we're still going to not know much about these planets for many years to come. But that's of course part of the beauty of astronomy, there are so many different mysteries left to solve. And more importantly, after approximately 30 years of observation and search for various exoplanets, various teams across the planet identified over 5,000 different exoplanets that have been officially confirmed, and pretty much most of them seem to be extremely unique, possessing features that we just don't seem to have in the solar system and potentially being different in a lot of other ways we can't even imagine yet. Which means that there are going to be so many different studies and so many new discoveries when it comes to various exoplanets in the years to come. But I guess what's even more intriguing is that you can also join all of this. I've made a video approximately a year and a half ago about how you can actually join the search for exoplanets and maybe even find your own. It's surprisingly easy to access all of this data and it's actually surprisingly easy to analyze this. And so do check out the previous video available somewhere right there or in the description below to find out how you can do this. 
But I guess until future videos, future discoveries, or future analysis of various exoplanets, that's all I wanted to mention. Huge congratulations to every single team that was responsible for discovering at least one of these planets, and all of the scientists that have been developing these new techniques that helped us discover so much more. On that note, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.